All right, so now we actually have to add in our template. And to do that, we need to create a new folder for our templates. And then we also need to actually um, make the settings work so our templates also work. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collapse the configuration folder and within source, I'm gonna do a new folder and I'm gonna call it templates. All right, so now we have this folder in here called templates and we have our configuration folder there. So within templates, I'm gonna click on it and do a new file, save this file, I'm gonna save it as home.html and then we'll save it in there. All right, so now we have a file called home and this is just regular HTML document. Um, so let's actually go ahead and write out some HTML. So if I did doc type HTML, open HTML, close the HTML and then body, body, and then hello, welcome home. All right, so I save that. And if I go back in here to home, to our home page, I see template does not exist still. Uh, and that's because we actually don't have the folder for templates set up yet. Uh, so we don't actually have it in our settings, so it will see that this template folder actually exists. So let's go ahead and open up our configuration folder, click on settings, and let's actually scroll down. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom where static URL is, right above that, and right above static files. I'll do template I'll do template ders and this is a tuple so we want to put in where our templates exist and we want to do it relative to our virtual environment and our project in general um, so you could put it where it's like a like an actual extension to where that product is project is so let's um let's let's show you that real quick so I'm gonna close out the server list everything out I'm gonna hit Command K to clear it. So list everything out. So we have our templates here. If I go CD templates, and I do PWD or DIR if you're on uh, if you're on a Windows, it's gonna show you this path. So this path is showing me exactly where that template folder is. So let's go ahead and copy that. All right, and we will paste it into here. So make sure it's a string. Paste it in put a slash at the end and a comma after the string, just like that. Uh, otherwise you might run into some errors. So we'll save that and let's go look at it and do a refresh in here. Ah, we gotta make sure the server is running, of course. Python manage.py, run server. Up, oh, go back, so cd back. And now I'm where I'm in the root where manage.py is. So I can press up a couple times and there, I see Python manage.py, run server. And if I refresh, it says, welcome home. All right, so that's cool. Our HTML is now working, but this is not that great. Because if I sent you this project, well, you aren't jmitch, more than likely. You don't have your user as jmitch. And you also might not be on the desktop. So the way this is written is pretty bad. So I'm actually gonna comment it out. And I'm gonna look at something else that looks a little bit closer to what we what we need. If I scroll to the top, we see base dir. So this is the root of the project, right? So the root of the project is source. Well, let's actually see what the root of the project is um, by hitting print base dir. All right, so I'm gonna go back into Chrome Refresh, it says template doesn't exist again because we made it, commented it out. And if I look into my terminal, I see, I, I said print base dir. So let's say print base dir is plus that. Let's refresh again. Look in here, we see base dir or base directory is that. Now this command, Right, or this right here using OS is showing me where my base directory is, where source is, right? So if we just added to that, we could then find templates. 
right? So if we added the templates to this base directory, then we could find templates. So if I did plus slash templates slash, right? Because if we look at how this is written out, oh, it already did it for us. It did it really fast. Um, so if I scroll up, right? So basically I just did that, but before it was like this. So I added that slash templates. Now it's showing me where those templates are. So let's let's go ahead and copy this right here. I'm gonna scroll down and put it in basters, put a comma there. All right, and let's go back into our project, do a refresh. Hey, it works again. Well, that's okay. But what if you're on a Windows and your paths look more like that, which is true for Windows. They have those different direction of the slash we need one more thing. So a hint would be if we scrolled up a little bit, we see this os.path.join base dir and db.sqlite3. So if we look at that, well, db.sqlite is right here. So that's our database. It was automatically created for us, which is nice. Um, but it's right here. It's on the same path as templates. So if we copy this, we could go down here and call this templates. Comment this out, go in here, refresh, same thing. All right, so that's kind of nice. What that allows us to do is get this base directory and the templates. So I'm actually gonna explain a little bit more as to what it does. So I'm gonna get rid of this print, we don't need that anymore. So what os.path.durname for file does is it looks with for the directory name where this file exists. So in this case, this is settings.py, right? That file exists in the LWC directory. So that directory is what this turns out to be. And then it looks for the directory above that using this one. So it's gonna grab the directory of that directory of that file. And then it gives that whole path because it's OS path, so operating system path for the directory name of the directory name of where the file is, which would be source. So if I did one more of these, so if I added this, it's gonna give me one above source. So if I print base dir now, it'll give me one above source, so LWC, which is our virtual environment. So if I scrolled up again, we'd see it's basically going here, right? It's getting rid of that. So that's not what we want. So let's actually undo everything. That's how that works. And then if we scroll down a little bit, OS path is joining two paths together. The base directory path, which is of course set here, and just this name here. This could be a path itself, or it could be a folder itself, or it could be the name of a file, and it just adds them together. So all that is doing, we can print this out too. Print that. Scroll to the bottom. We see it's giving us the path directly to db.sqlite3. Now, if you're on a Windows, you would see this difference and you would understand it and it would work very well. All right, so let's delete that. We now have our template set up. That's great. So let's talk about setting file a little bit. Oh, and one more thing to note about the templates. This is a normal HTML document. So if you know HTML, you can now make a lot of pages and almost be ready for it to be done. But, well, we need a lot more to do. So let's go back into settings. We already talked about baster, secret key. This is something that you want to keep secret, as it says. Don't use it in production or don't give it out in production. All right? That makes that should make sense. It's like a password kind of for the Django project. Debug. Now you don't want debug turned on in production. Same thing. So debug is, well, it's this, that's template debug, but it also run, looks for errors within your code. Um, so debug being true would mean that it's not gonna necessarily send an error to you. Like a 500 error will not actually send an email to you, stuff like that, uh, which you don't have to know what that means. But basically if there's a server error, Debug is not going to email you. It's just going to show you that there's a server error on your terminal. 
uh, possibly also in your browser. The error might be the same. Allowed hosts is a, a list. So you could say, you know, Swift for entrepreneurs.com, coding for entrepreneurs.com. So, and then WW in front of it as well, or star for all subdomains. Um, so that allows you to have your domains in there. All right, don't put HTTP, you don't need that. But these are hosting sites. Um, this is a nice security fe feature because it basically um, prohibits anyone else to be using your site and trying to pass it off as a different domain, which does happen sometimes. Okay, so now that we have that, um, I did mention when we installed our apps, so when it said create table, that's what this is, installed apps. It's creating tables that are based off of these apps. We will still discuss apps, but this is why we saw those original things being created, is because by default, all of these are installed. Middleware classes, um, this is definitely a more advanced topic, not gonna go into it a whole lot, but it's something to know, is middleware happens in between a request and a response. So just keep that in mind. Between the time some action happens, middleware is touched first, and then it goes into a view or something like that. So like, think of it like a doorbell, right? If I ring a doorbell, what happens in between is the electricity is going through and then it goes to wherever the doorbell thing is that, that rings, right? So that's how that middleware is that, that electricity being passed. That's kind of what middleware is like, where the view would be more like the actual ringer for the doorbell. Uh, root URL conf, this should be fairly straightforward, root URL configuration. So what is the default URL file that we wanna use for our configuration? URLs.py, by default, it's gonna be the one that we created with start project. You can change this if you want, but there's really no reason to. Uh, WSGI application, this is kind of how your project served. So we're gonna ignore this for now. Um, it has to do with when you go live and stuff like that. Databases, we've talked about this already. Uh, databases, um, there's all types of databases that actually work with Django. So you can go here to see what all the different databases are. SQLite is a nice, easy, light database that allows us to jump right into coding. Um, so you could, if you had MySQL set up on your computer or Postgres, you could actually use that here. Uh, but in this case, I'm just using the default that comes with it, which is SQLite, just so you can get started really fast. Uh, language code, th these things you could just Google, uh, you can look them up or just see the topics. Intern internationalization, so the time zones and stuff like that. Template DIRS, we just did that one. Static URL and static files. This stuff we're gonna have to go through on a different and a different time. Uh, but there we go. So we have a view, we have an HTML document actually working, but there's one more thing that I wanna add to templates and I'm gonna do a new file and I'm gonna call it base.html. So base is gonna be where all of our other files actually inherit from. Um, so we'll come back to base, but essentially base is the parent. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this, or cut it, excuse me, and paste it in base, and then cut the bottom, and also paste it at the bottom of base. So what this is doing is called inheritance, and you'll see it in action when we do this. So extends base.html, and then that means that it's gonna take everything that from base.html and use it. But this content, we still want it to show up on home. So we actually need to make what's called a block. So we do block content. So block is not arbitrary, but content is. So naming it however you want, you can name it main content or uh, ABC, you can name it whatever. Uh, the convention is calling it content for your main content. Uh, but again, it's kind of up to you. Block, on the other hand, is not. This is a template tag that allows us to do this inheritance, which we'll see in action in just a second here. So if I copy this, paste this in here, and now put that HTML in there, what we just did was, is we are substituting whatever's here with this, because it's extending. All right, so let's go back in and do a refresh on our home page, And we see, hello, welcome home. Uh, that's still there and here is not there, right? So if I put here above it, here would now be there. 
And if I moved hello, welcome, hello, home out of block content, it would be gone. All right, so that is the basics of using blocks and templates and setting up our templates. So there's definitely a lot more here that we're just not gonna cover, um, but that's just kind of cool to see. You can be smarter about it, and we are gonna change our base quite a bit, so keep that in mind too, because we want this thing to look like something, well, better, like Bootstrap. So in the next one, we'll cover implementing Bootstrap for your templates. All right, see you then.